Hello people, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be going over secret paths to get into medical school, or not exactly secret paths, but just secrets in general to help you become a doctor. And this was a really requested video, so... <laughs> Since we randomly just dropped in our last video, there are some secrets, exactly. and then the comment section blew part of it. <laughs> yeah, so we pushed back a couple of videos and uh, we're making this. So uh, what do we mean by secret paths to get into medical school? So what I mean by that is in this video, we're gonna be going over some secret tips that you might not have thought of or not have taken seriously, but we're really gonna flesh out and make sure you guys completely understand these options that can help you become a physician if you might've given up or you thought it was impossible or if you're just looking for a different road. Uh, we can probably highlight some secrets that will help you guys on your journey. Exactly, and some of these you might have heard, but if you have heard of them, we're gonna let you know if they're actually useful or not, or if you should try and see if they're for you. Yeah. The first secret, which is one you might have already heard of, so we're putting it earlier in the video, but some of you haven't, and this is pretty important if you haven't heard this, is to apply to DO programs. So what exactly is a DO program? DOs are different degree of medicine, uh, but they are essentially the same thing and DOs are growing more and more in the country. I think you guys can Google plenty of videos on DOs and hear people screaming at you, they're equal, they're this and that, they're exactly like all the other doctors. That's great, uh, but it's something we wanna highlight here so that you take it seriously. Regarding DOs, they're basically the same thing as MDs and you apply through a similar process. I would say in general, DOs are a little less competitive to get into. Um, I know there's some controversy, some people will dispute that, but in general, from what I've seen, and I think a lot of people would agree, um, DOs, it's generally less competitive. You can have a lower GPA and MCAT and still get into DO school. So if you fit the bill and you have a lower GPA and a lower MCAT, or even if you have a higher GPA and higher MCAT, I would still advise you to apply to DO programs. And the pro tip, some of the secrets, I'm telling you, we're dropping them all today. Look out for the really, really new DO schools because there's a lot of them popping up. I remember reading SDN when we were just looking around and we try to look around for these videos and stuff like that. We do a little research and there are schools out there that are new and their first year classes are taking kids with 2.9 GPAs, MCATs in the, I don't know, what the range now the new five scale is five, like, yeah, five whatever it is. It's a way into medical school, guys, and you'll be a full-on physician, you'll be practicing, it doesn't matter what the hell the letters at the end of your name are. The same thing applies to MD schools. There are new MD schools mm -hmm. opening every year, and not as many people know about them, so there's less people applying to those MD schools. So make sure you're looking out for new MD schools, and some of them might even open in the middle of the application cycle. Mm -hmm. So keep your ears open, keep your eyes uh, peeled. What is right. it the other way? I don't know how. Right. I, I don't know. For example, there was a school in California called North State that recently opened up, and within I think they did a for their first class they started their application cycle somewhere toward the end of the application cycle for that year. It was like near May or something like that, like right toward the end. And they had a one month cycle, guys, of picking up students. So your pool, your applicant pool, was so tiny compared to everybody else. If you had applied that year, that you had a really good shot at getting into medical school so there are a lot of these little games going around so keep your eyes peeled for our new medical schools second route that some of you might not have heard of is the BAMD route which is when they combine college and medical school so basically at the end of high school you apply to these programs and if you get in as long as you have a minimum MCAT and GPA or depend it depends on the program there's different requirements but generally they're pretty lax and as long as you meet those requirements, you're guaranteed admission into medical school. You're basically skipping the hardest process, which is in the middle, which is college, the pre-med path. I would say out of all of the paths, this is probably the most chill because not only are you staying in the United States, but you only you don't need a 4.0 GPA, you don't need an extra high MCAT, you don't need to do tons of extra curriculum. You're basically skipping all of the stress in college and just skating on by. If quality of life is really important to you, then this is probably the path for you. Also, some programs are accelerated, so you even have less years than you would in any other traditional path. So speaking of skipping on by, let's get directly into our next point, which is the path of going international as a medical student, including the Caribbean medical schools, which you might have heard of. 
Mm -hmm. So a ton of people are already screaming through the computer, don't go yeah. to a Caribbean medical school. They have their pitchforks out, they're hitting the dislike button, hit that like button, um, <laughs> and the notification bell. And <laughs> and <laughs> just get it in there right now. Yeah. Um, but the notification bell is the most important because it tells you when our videos are coming. Yep. Um, but anyways, back to <laughs> back the pitchfork, back yep. to the pitchforks. But basically, again, guys, we're trying to keep it real here. So you're always going to hear, don't go to Caribbean schools. Don't go to international, Ireland, India, Hungary, wherever it might be. And while that's true for a lot of people, you have to understand that it might be true for some people that it's better for them to do these paths. So who am I talking about? So if you're a student that is going to take on undergrad and kill it as a pre-med and you know you're going to do well, then go ahead and do that traditional path and then take MD, DO, all the stuff that we're taking into account. But if you're a student that is getting by in high school, you have like a two point something already in high school, you know college is not for you, um, you know that uh, studying is just not your thing and at the current state of mind that you're at right now and you know you're not going to kill the SAT and go to a good college or something like that, then you might be eligible for this breezy pathway that um, a lot of people don't recommend and we'll explain why but it might still be good for you. Go abroad, you skip the entire undergrad process. Yeah, so you're basically saving four years of college, mm -hmm. which if time is of the essence to you, this is probably something appealing. Yeah, so a lot of people don't know this, that in places like England or India, you can go straight out of high school, go into medical school and get learning medicine. So how you do that is research the medical school that is accredited back in the United States where these students can come back and take the Yosemite Step 1 and actually be eligible to apply for residencies here in America. So once you identify these schools, understand how many non-resident um, individuals they take to these schools and uh, go ahead and apply to those schools and do well there. You'll breeze by, I'm sure you'll pass all your exams there. It's just like studying for college, except you're doing medicine. And then survive all that in whatever conditions. We already know folks that have done this going to India, so. Exactly, so just for those of you who are new to the channel, mm -hmm. we're both in the US, but we have personally seen a good number of people who have skipped all of college and have basically out of high school went to medical school and become doctors. So it is something that does happen. It is something that can work for you, but uh, as a word of warning, so who is this not for? Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for a competitive residency or a competitive specialty, mm -hmm. you're much less likely to get that if you're not at a US school. And a lot of people note that some international places like the Caribbean have a low match rate. So there is a warning signal we're sending to you right now that this is probably not for you. This is more for the exceptions rather than the rule. This is more for the students that, you know, like you said, aren't gonna kill it in college that, you know, don't want those extra years that aren't looking for competitive specialty. There's a lot of caveats here, but yeah. if you fit the bill, then uh, ship yourself to India. Right, and the main, <laughs> <laughs> the main thing we want to get across, by the way, before we continue, we have seen individuals succeed in every single one of these paths that we're talking about right now. We're never going to advise somebody, yo, go to India, go to the Caribbean, go to do this, if we haven't seen people do it, and a lot of people do it, actually. You just have to know who it's for and who it's right for and what the end goal is with everything. So if your end goal is you want to be a hospitalist or you want to be a family medicine doctor, you don't care what state you do your residency in, such as some states are more competitive like California, and you don't mind living out in the middle of like uh, Arkansas or something like that then you might find it better to just skip undergrad go ahead and get your four years done somewhere else come back kill step one or just pass step one hit land your residency a lot of people are going to clamor about or or cry about uh, why this path is bad and the main reason is because you will not get a residency their residency programs don't like internationals as much as they like the United States physicians. You really have to prove yourself. You really have to prove yourself through your step one score. You really have to prove yourself through letters, whatever research you can get your hands on, connections. But connections, I would say, is the biggest one of all of these for an international student. And for those people who are always, you know, stuck to one narrow path and are like, 
never go to the Caribbean, never go international, mm -hmm. never do the BAM. You have to keep an open mind because mm -hmm. you can't just stick to one path is for everybody because that's not how life works. Uh, the, the down, another downside to this path, other than if you land your residency, you become a doctor, the unfortunate side of medicine is you won't really hear this with your patients and people that don't know medicine as much, but within the medicine and educated upper higher education realm, the DO students, it's getting a little better for the DO students, but they're kind of still seen as MD, DO, and then Caribbean, and then like India, Hungary, and places like that. Like that is the uh, that is the hierarchy. traditional hierarchy that is seen as. Like we don't need to hide. That's what a lot of people think of. It's a lot of it's being demolished. Like DOs are kind of being seen as equal as MDs now everywhere, and they are um, in their training and etc. Exactly, and in general, in terms of how you would look at them, if you first of all, all do a doctor is a doctor, right? But if you are gonna put them in a hierarchy. Like you have to look at how they do in their school, mm -hmm. what school they're going to. Not every school outside of the United States is the same. <laughs> not all schools in uh, Europe versus India are the same and not all schools in India are the same. You can have a good school in India, you can have a shit school in India. So you have to look at more than one factor, more than the DO, the MD, the sticker you put on your door. Yeah, that's what a lot of people do is they just summarize it by the letters where they did it. Letters are country, that's pretty much all it's summarized to and it's yeah. so much more than that. And that leads me to our next point, which is connections. Connections, 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 connect. <laughs> when you're applying to medical schools, make sure that you have connections to the medical school or schools that you want to get into. And one of the ways that you can do this is through research. So when you're applying for research, make sure you email or get in contact with or however, get research at the medical school you want to go into. And if you're cool with that professor, PI, whoever, that is a very solid way to get into that medical school. Yep, who knows, it might even be taking a part in the admissions process or something like that. And, you know, of course the person that knows them is going to have the advantage, like these are just basics. Alright, now to go to our last point, I hope the points so far have been helpful. And this is one that I think a lot of people can relate to, and that is having a concrete, solid story that you can present. And that applies to when you're writing your essays, make sure that everyone basically has a story. And what separates you from everyone else is how much you can piece together your story, how much you can solidify it with certain examples in your life, how much you go back and reflect and form this life experience that you've had over the past 10, 15, 20 years. Because everybody has a story, but if you can flesh out your story and make it more enticing in your essays, your secondaries, during interviews, if you can present your story well, you have a solid advantage over other applicants who might be in similar circumstances, but just aren't able to piece together their story as well as you. All right, well, that's gonna be it for the video. Make sure you hit the notification bell. I know you didn't do it earlier. 